All right, so for this week's Challenge Wednesday, we have our patient, Jen. And Jen presents to physical therapy with a referral to evaluate and treat bilateral vestibular hypofunction. The patient's chief complaint is frequent falls and feelings of unsteadiness. The best intervention to treat this condition is, so we have A, perform the Epley's maneuver bilaterally. B, gaze stabilization training. C, repeatedly place the patient in a symptom provoking position. And D, is to perform the clinical test of sensory interaction on balance, also known as the CTSIB. All right. So let's go up to the top here. Jim presents physical therapy, has this referral to evaluate and treat bilateral vestibular hypofunction. All right. So this is one of those vestibular pathologies where you got to slow up a little bit. We got to have an understanding of what this is before we continue to go down the question. So bilateral vestibular hypofunction, also known as like a vestibular loss or a loss of the vestibular system. So what we're really having having is the fact that the vestibular system bilaterally is not sending good signals to the brain about where the head is in space, all right? And that could be due to a bunch of different factors or a bunch of different pathologies that could cause bilateral vestibular hypofunction. One of the major ones is if somebody's taking like an antibiotic, like gentamicin, they're doing that over a period of time, that can cause bilateral vestibular hypofunction. Autoimmune conditions can cause bilateral vestibular hypofunction. So all I need you to know for the MPTE is that both sides of the vestibular system are not functioning properly. All right, let's continue down the question. It says the patient's chief complaint is frequent falls and feelings of unsteadiness. And that makes a lot of sense because think about it. The vestibular system is a part of your balance system, right? You have some out of sensory, vision, and vestibular. So if I took out the vestibular system, you're going to be more unsteady, right? You're going to have greater risk for falls because you've lost a part of that balance system. So all of this makes sense. Now it says the best intervention to treat this condition is, and then we have our answer choice again. Let me roll through them. A says, Perform the Epley's maneuver bilaterally. B is gay stabilization training. C is repeatedly place the patient in a symptom provoking position. And D is perform the CTSIB. All right. So here's the thing. We have A, perform Epley's maneuver. Now, if you are not familiar with the Epley's maneuver, you should know that it has a lot to do with what? For those of you who do know this term, what, what, what are we treating with the Epley's maneuver? You should be saying BPPV, right? That posterior semicircular canal, the anterior semicircular canal. Um, we are treating BPPV with that. Well, is that what the patient has in this situation? No, right? They have bilateral vestibular hypofunction. So the Epley's maneuver is not going to be an effective treatment for this patient. So we can already go ahead and rule out that answer choice, just not a good one. Let's go ahead to B. B says gay stabilization training. One of the most famous interventions in that neighborhood is going to be VOR times one, VOR times two. You remember those? So, you know, that's where you have the target out in front of you and your head is rotating side to side in a horizontal fashion while keeping your, your focus on the target. And then you can also do vertical as well. That's VOR times one. VR times two is when you're alternating, right? Or or the, the target is going in an opposite motion to your head and you're going back and forth. That's VOR times two. Okay, so those are types of gay stabilization training. All right? Is that something we want to do here? And see, you should be thinking that, yeah, you know what? This is something that I would want to do because if the patient has lost the vestibular system, we have to make sure that their other systems are operating as optimal as possible. And when I say other systems, I'm talking about somatosensory. I'm talking about the visual system, right? And so the visual ocular reflex, what that whole training is helping the patient to utilize the vision to keep an object in focus. It is going to help them with their falling. It's going to help them with their feelings of unsteadiness. I like that. It works. Doesn't mean it's the best answer. Doesn't mean that. But right now it's looking pretty darn good.
Okay, so I'm gonna put a check mark next to that for right now. Let's go to C. C says repeatedly place the patient in a symptom provoking position. Do you know what that is? All right, slow up the car, put down the weights for a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you know what repeatedly placing the patient in a symptom provoking position is? Because really another way of saying that is habituation. That's what you're doing. It's a habituation strategy. You're putting this patient into the symptom provoking position, trying to create neural adaptation. Now it's not nice for the patient. Patient doesn't feel good while you're doing it, but you're trying to create an adaptation and then the symptoms go away. Now here's the problem. Bilateral vestibular hypofunction, y'all, it doesn't have those like normal symptoms of the peripheral vestibular uh, dysfunction. It doesn't have like vertigo and the stagmus even. It doesn't have like the nausea and vomiting and all that stuff that's associated with it. Now, BPVV has that. Maybe Meniere's disease has that, but not uh, bilateral vestibular hypofunction. So the reason why you would even habituate someone is because they have those symptoms and you're trying to get rid of it. But this patient doesn't have those symptoms. So habituation is not going to be the type of intervention strategy that you would want to go with. All right. So right now, is that going to be the best intervention for us is what I'm asking you? That should be no. You should be saying no to me. All right. So let's go ahead and eliminate that one for now. Let's look at D. D says perform the CTSIB. Should we do that? This one I can eliminate out really quickly. And the reason being is that the CTSIB, is it an intervention or is it an assessment? All right. Is it an intervention or assessment? And you should be saying that, Kyle, this is an assessment right here. CTSIB is used to assess what the patient is having issues with, what the patient is having as intact systems. So is the visual system intact? Is the vestibular system or is the somatosensory system intact? That's really what the CTSIB is doing. It's not really there to treat the patient. All right. So D is not answering the question. The question's asking for an intervention, and that is an assessment. We can eliminate D with certainty, leaving us with the best answer of gaze stabilization training. For those of you who got this question correct, congratulations. The stimular system is not an easy one. You have to have an understanding of what all these different, you know, areas are. Uh, whether it's bilateral vestibular hypofunction, BPPV, unilateral vestibular hypofunction, you have to know the pathology in order to determine what is going to be the patient's best like intervention, like what's going to be the most effective for that patient. All right. So I really recommend that if this area is something that you're having trouble with, don't try to learn the entire vestibular system all at once. Don't go in there trying to learn everything. Just pull out a couple things. Understand BPPV first, get a really good understanding, and then go back for something like Meniere's disease. And as soon as you understand that, then go back for bilateral vestibular hypofunction and understand that and the interventions that address it. All right, that's my strategy to you. 